Hello, my name is Archie Lentz, and I live in the great state of Indiana, one of the original 19 states of the Union. And I'm going to talk to you today about my top seven picks for books about the Civil War in no particular order. And please like this video. And uh, the first book I'm going to show you is High Tide at Gettysburg by Glenn Tucker. There are warehouses full of books on the Battle of Gettysburg. It lasted three days and I have one book that uh, is called The Battles of Gettysburg because each day was practically a separate battle. So if you want to get one book to get a good overview of the Battle of Gettysburg, this would absolutely be the best book. It's very readable and comprehensive without going into the minutia of Battery A went to point W and etc. like that. So great book. The next book is a novel, The Widow of the South. I don't usually read historical novels, but this one was definitely worth the reading and I recommend it. I'll uh, read the first paragraph from the Inside Dust Jacket. In 1894, Carrie McGavick is an old woman who has only her former slave to keep her company, and the almost 1,500 soldiers buried in her backyard. If that doesn't get your attention, I don't know what would. I've been to that cemetery and walked it. And uh, so this book about a woman who became known as the widow of the South because of her care for these fallen uh, Confederate soldiers uh, is highly recommended. That would have been after the Battle of Franklin, Tennessee on November 30th, 1864, towards the end of the war. Tremendous battle. In fact, if you read Gone with the Wind, you'll find that Rhett Butler supposedly was in the Confederate Army there. And the next book is titled The South's Last 100 Boys in Gray, author J.S. Hoar, H-O-A-R. And it is, as the title says, about the last 100 men to live at the very extremity of age and survive multiple wives they survived most of their all of their children they survived some of their grandchildren um, they had bullets pierce their hats their coats they fell off of roofs when they were repairing their houses when they were in their 90s one of them got hit by an automobile i mean they just defied all of the odds but uh, they were the ordinary soldiers of the civil war but an extraordinary group. And one thing I found out, in case you like to find out about how long it's possible to extend your life, uh, is they all did a lot of walking. One fellow I remember walked five miles every day back to the post office and forth, total 10 miles a day. So walking is highly recommended too. But that is um, the last, the South's last boys in gray by J. S. Hoar. Then, if I were to tell you that I saw in the evening news that the United States Army shelled a major American city, that would be shocking. But that actually happened at Vicksburg in 1863 when the Confederates were driven back into the city and laid siege to, the people were bombarded by the federal artillery and starved. And uh, this lady wrote a book titled My Cave Life in Vicksburg. Uh, the, the book is antiquarian. It's been republished, though. Uh, the, the author is listed as 
by a lady because in uh, the year this was published, which was 1864, the war was still going on, uh, a lady was only supposed to get her name in a newspaper when she was married or when she died. My Cave Life in Vicksburg, it's an amazing book, what they lived through. And interestingly, she uh, was actually from New York, I believe, and had left that city. The next book, this looks pretty ratty, because I've, I've read it through so many times, and it's a classic uh, Civil War book titled Company H, a sideshow of the big show by Sam R. Watkins, who was a veteran of the Army of Tennessee, the Confederate Army that actually made the attack at Franklin, Tennessee. And uh, one of the things that uh, I really love about this book is that the author spells with onomatopoeia. So when he spells the sound of a bullet whistling by, shoom, he spells it. And he does great things with onomatopoeia. And so there is one to add to your list. You must read that book because it's a soldier story. Confederate, but nonetheless a soldier. Next, and we're coming towards the end here, is Hard Tack and Coffee. This happens to be an original copy, but it's been reprinted many times. The author was a federal soldier, or Union soldier, and his uh, name was uh, John D. Billings, and it's got lots of good illustrations in it too, but it tells all about the details of soldier life. Um, one of my favorite chapters was about the army mule and how, what that guy was like to deal with. So, hardtack and coffee. Great read. And then, my last selection is... It's titled Andersonville. And the author was uh, John McElroy. Uh, he's one of those guys that, well, he could tell a story. And some people can't, even though they have good stories. But his book, Andersonville, A Story of Rebel Military Prisons, is about the notorious uh, Camp Sumter in uh, Georgia, Andersonville, Georgia. There's been also a lot of books written about this. Seems like uh, about every guy that was there and survived it wrote a book about it, but that is definitely my favorite. This one's kind of beat up. Um, what comes to mind is a scene where the uh, camp commander was visiting the prisoners and he had a bulldog with him. And of course, these guys were starving. Well, his bulldog disappeared and became a menu item on the federal uh, diet there. Uh, there's a little uh, picture about that. It was considered one of their best uh, chances to get back at their Confederate captors. Which leads me to, now that I've gotten through my top seven Civil War titles, a uh, booklet that um, I have written is titled... Kentucky and three of her sons in the Civil War. And it's about uh, a third great uncle named Joseph Martin Grambling, who was in the 9th United States Kentucky Regiment. Most people think of Kentucky as a Confederate state, but actually it served the Union in greater numbers, and he was one of them. Early in the war in 1862, himself and two companions were on their way back to the army to march toward uh, Grant's support at uh, what became the Battle of Shiloh. They were on their way back there, and they got to a, a telegraph office in Gallatin, Tennessee. And even though they were well behind Union lines, nobody told uh, Confederate General Morgan that it was behind Union lines, and uh, when they pulled up and met a federal picket, the guys that they thought were a federal picket pulled out their shotguns, and they became guests of the Southern Confederacy. Um, and what happened to them was typical of the three fates of 
prisoners of war. They were either exchanged, which happened to one of them early in the war when they were trading prisoners, or in uh, the lieutenant's case that was with these guys, he was uh, able to escape. But uh, unfortunately for my kinsman, he uh, died of dysentery at Macon, Georgia in 1862, which actually was the, uh, it was the prototype for what became Andersonville, the story I just related to you. And uh, uh, you can uh, use the link below to find a copy of this if you're interested. In it. And I, admittedly, it's a, sort of a side story. But it's been fun talking to you about uh, the top seven Civil War books. And uh, so if you're looking to read something about the Civil War, you can't miss with those books. But there are many others, admittedly. And uh, feel free to make uh, comments on what have been your favorite Civil War books. And um, subscribe to this channel if you uh, like the type of things I'm talking about in terms of history and politics. Thank you. Have a good rest of the day wherever you are in it. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Glory, glory, hallelujah.